Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be taking a look at Ubuntu Kaylin. So let's get started. This operating system actually been on my radar for quite some time now. It's actually back in the time when I was doing a review on Ubuntu Deepin. This popped up on my radar. Now I did check it out at that time, but it was still buggy. So I didn't really make a video about it. And now I kind of forgot about it and we're revisiting it now this is 20.04.1 and they actually fixed a lot of the problems that i was having issues with before so there's no better time than now to check it out so let's begin all right so the first thing while we're jumping into the operating system you're going to notice it actually has a very windows 10 feeling to it so if you take a look at the start menu it actually has the icons on the bottom right and task manager you have your show desktop here this is the night mode that they have and your clock and everything. Then you have the launch bar on the left side and also the start menu. So yeah, it's very familiar to Windows, you could say. And I think if we were to ever go into Windows 11, Windows 11 should take some notes from this guy because it actually looks so good. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is actually pop over to system monitor. You can see like you could right click and it's like a task manager, so it's pretty cool. Head over to resources and you're gonna see on a fresh boot, it's under one gig of RAM. Still a little bit heavy on my thoughts, but it's not too bad. And if you notice, like, if you kind of take a look, it's got a blur to the windows and stuff like that. So if you could see, maybe I need a more aggressive wallpaper, but you could kind of see like how the blur comes in in the back just so slightly and very elegantly. Now, if I pop it over to the computer, you could see that I have my 62 gigabyte um, or 64 gigabyte um, EMMC. This is based off the Odyssey that I'm running off. And I also have a 250 gigabyte M.2 drive installed here. Not really mounted, it's just there to see if I could detect it. You got your network neighborhood. Again, sounds very familiar. And then you have all your, um, you know, documents and everything on the left side. Now, one thing I did notice is if I go into the file system and if I go into say, where's home? Home. I can't hit the back button on my mouse. It doesn't work, which I normally would use, but I, I, it doesn't work on this operating system. You're also going to notice that this version of Ubuntu Kaylin is actually made for the Chinese. So you will see a couple of Chinese characters floating here and there because yes, while I installed it for English, you're still going to have some of these applications lingering around. Now I'm going to show you guys and pop over to settings to show you what we have in store. There's not much settings to go by. It's kind of like locked down. There's not much like I could add new themes or stuff like that, but either way, it still looks pretty good and it functions really well. Now I'm on my display settings. You got your 1080 screen zoom. Does this have fractional scaling? No, it does not have fractional scaling. Okay, I thought it would have. You got your default apps, which is Firefox, Firefox browser, uh, mail, which Thunder mail. Your power options, you could actually change. Uh, it does have some implementations for laptops, like you could see when lid is closed, do something about it. Auto boot, I would guess this is the auto start applications. You could check them, uncheck them, and add some auto boot features. Next, you have your devices, printers, mouse, uh, touchpad, keyboard settings. Here you could add like different keyboard layouts like for Chinese and stuff. Uh, shortcuts, uh, let's see, normal shortcuts, log in, log off, okay. This is wrong. It should be Windows key L. Come on now. Um, add custom shortcuts. Then you have your audio where you can select from onboard device or HDMI, stuff like that. Uh, the theming is what I wanted to show you. Now they do have pretty good backgrounds. That's why I chose this one. I do like how this background looks like. Scroll down. They do have a few backgrounds over here. You could actually get them online. And then if I go over to themes, they do have a light mode and a dark mode which I thought was pretty cool. Let me open a file browser to show you how the light mode looks. Now I do like the light mode for a file browser. And look, if I'm dragging, you see the blur effect that happens? That's pretty cool. But yeah, you do get the blur still with the light mode. And I do like how I browse files in the light mode version. Now, normally when you first load into this, you do get the icon view, but I switched over to list view. And you also get to switch out the icons from basic to classic. What else do you got? The mouse icons, all mouse themes, and you got the effect settings for performance mode or not performance mode. So if I enable this, instead of having blur, you're gonna have transparency. And I think it requires a login and log off for this. I'm not sure because this should have changed the transparent not to blur. Yeah, it's kind of screwy because now I lost the blur. 
well, there's a bug. Because performance mode is supposed to not give you the blur. Like this is giving you the blur. Turn it off and now I lost it, you could say. And then if I hit the start menu, I got uh, transparency, but not, yeah, this is weird. Normally the performance mode off would have gave you everything blurred. So it's a little backwards right now. You also get the screen lock, which I do not like because the screen lock is still broken. What I mean by broken is when I try to log off, I'm going to show you right now, it gets locked where I can't even type in my keyboard, but it does detect my keyboard because if I press num lock or something, it detects it, but I can't type in that area. In order to log back in, I would have to press the power button and switch user for my, then I could type in my password. Now fonts you could change, and I think they're using this NATO Sans, which is like a Chinese type of uh, NATO version. Uh, you get your screensaver, which I, again, don't like because it actually keeps track of how long you've been logged off for. So as soon as this comes on, on the bottom right, I'm going to show you here, it actually counts how long you have not touched your screen. So I don't need people to know how long I haven't been to my computer. Next thing you have desktop icons. You could switch on and off. Yeah, like the tray icons on the bottom right, the notification menus. Okay, I get that. You also have your net connect, wire connection, wireless, VPNs that you could add. Also your proxy, uh, your user account. So you could add new users, change your password, change account type, uh, enable auto login, network account. So you can log into their cloud, which I probably would never do. Um, you got your time and date. Okay, this is another weird thing. You see how they're still Chinese here? But if I switch over to the 12 hour time, look where the thing it says PM in front. So it's, yeah, I don't use it that, for that reason, it's wrong. I don't, it's supposed to be in the back. Anyway, I keep it at the 24 hour time and I'm guessing area is for location, you know, and they also have an app for Chinese calendar instead of solar calendar, but I'll probably keep it as solar calendar. You have your updates, backups, and you also could check out the notice settings. Okay. And then about, you can see this is the UK UI user interface that we're looking at. And it's also still called here, Kaylin OS, but it's Ubuntu Kaylin. And that's it about for the settings. I'm going to switch this back over to the dark theme just to keep it that way. And we're going to head back over to, oh yeah, see the blur comes back in. It's, it's in and out. So yeah, there's a little buggy over there. Now they do have a bunch of their own software like the Kalen video. It's a Chinese video player or it's a video player that they just put a Chinese wallpaper to. This looks almost like um, the video player you get with GNOME. And I did put a video in here somewhere. Let me see. BB flower. Yeah. Let me run this. And maybe I could have just dragged and dropped. But yeah. It works just like it should. Uh, it's got a really cool thing over there. Yeah. Very similar to the one you get with GNOME. Uh, MV, MPV video. Yeah. Let me close out of that. Because we know that works. Uh, you have the system monitor which you saw earlier. Um... Then you also have, I installed Steam, so I was able to get Steam. Now, funniest thing is, look, if I go into Kalen Software Center, it's their own Chinese version of Software Center, so it's missing a lot of the apps that you would normally expect when you're in the States, I would say. Like, if I was to install Steam, and you can see all the apps have Chinese words on it, but if I was to install or search for Steam, it's not there. In order to get specific applications that you need, you're probably better off installing Ubuntu Software Center. So, yeah, I would keep... Probably not even use this. I would probably use just Ubuntu Software Center. Okay, moving down, you also have your Firefox web browser, uh, your Kalen Assist Assistant. Um, I think this takes a while to load, so I'm just gonna let that run in the background while we check out the other apps. Uh, you also have WPS Editor. Now, if you are not familiar with this type of office, this is like a closed soft Microsoft Office type thing. It's very, very clean, very, very usable, but the problem is, it's closed source, so I don't really use it. But if you guys are interested in getting like a really nice uh, editor, you probably might want to try WPS. Uh, what else do they have over here? You have Mate Terminal, Software Updater, Mahjong, Mate. A lot of stuff is from Mate itself and the WPS. So other than the couple of apps that we were just talking about with their Kaden software and the Kaden video, not much going on over there. If I right click and set up panel, I think it goes back into the the task manager. Yep. Yeah. Right here. The tray icons. If I was to right click on the start menu, do I get anything funky with that? Oh, okay. I could log in, log off. All right. Something I expected. Now, if I was going to the Firefox web browser, just to see how their web browser works. Oh, Kaylin assistant finally popped up. Um, it does bring you to their version of MSN Chinese version. 
I don't know how to explain it, but uh, yeah, I mean, I should be able to, and you know what, let me try Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. It does load. Okay, so these websites from China is probably blocked through the ISP, not through, you know, the actual operating system itself, but I was just checking. Web browsing does work, and you can see that it does go into Facebooks, so you should be fine with that. Now, their Kaolin Assistant actually has, like, some cleaning software that will you know, delete certain files from your uh, computer. It's much like BitBleach. Yeah, that's the program. BitBleach, I believe, where it'll actually clean up the system. Uh, you also have a monitor and it tells you your temperature of your system and your CPU FM. Okay. Uh, your drive space, your drives, sound card, drivers, motherboard, stuff like that, system info. Because of this, Odyssey still uses the word default string. Everything is default string. Otherwise, you would see like what the model of your computer is. And then toolkits, you have their software center, then their system monitor, and your, I guess, their printer software. And that's about it. So ultimately, I do really like this operating system because it looks so clean. It feels like Windows 10 and it functions like Windows 10. I didn't have much trouble navigating around it for the past two days. There was these little quirks like the time and the hitting the back button doesn't work, but otherwise, it is a pretty clean operating system. I do want to give it a little bit more time to mature because there are still some issues there. Now, this operating system has actually been around since 2013 and it used to be called Kaolin OS. So Ubuntu just took the Kaolin desktop or the UK UI and transferred it over to the Ubuntu stack. So basically it's Ubuntu Kaolin. That's, that's why we have it like this. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any other operating systems you want me to check out, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.